Title 42 is not consistent with our values, and it doesn't keep us safer. Uh, the Biden administration is putting plans in place to deal with people who are asking for uh, amnesty and humanitarian relief at the border. But keep in mind, we need comprehensive immigration reform. And that's something all the Democrats are on board for. We have to work out the details. We still need to be in that fight, though. That's where we need to make significant change. John, uh, I thought they did comprehensive immigration reform. They just sort of opened the border. Uh, now you've got 10 Democrats in the Senate. It's a very significant number. Oppose this move to end Title 42 by the administration. Warren's the, Warren, though, is talking about the administration going even further. Your reaction? I am sure that every moderate Democrat that's up for election this November appreciates this advice and these soothing words from Elizabeth Warren, <laughs> speaking from her liberal bastion of Boston, Massachusetts. Look, a train wreck is about to happen. It's a slow-moving train wreck, but... The end date is May 24th. That's when there is a congressional race in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas, which is on the border. And Henry Cuellar, who was all over the news this weekend, warning Democrats, do not lift Title 42. This will be a political disaster. I think if he wins his primary against a progressive Democratic challenger from the AOC brigade, I think it will send an earthquake message that people along the border, which is 90 percent Hispanic, are caring about this issue. Mm -hmm. So if Biden doesn't, if Biden lifts Title 42 and a couple days later, this congressional race goes the way I think it's going to go. I think the Democrats are looking at a complete disaster in every state that's not Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, you know, Kelly, uh, you know, to, to John's point, look, this, this policy, this open borders policy, is not popular with Latino no. voters. I mean, if you look at the polling data, it's not popular with them. She, but she's talking about amnesty. She's talking about more welfare for illegals out there. And it's got to be it's got to be driven by her and by Sanders, who who are, you know, are demonstrating just how much control right now they have over this administration. Your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, she talks about uh, Title 42 and how it goes against our values, our humanitarian values. Well, um, a National Guardsman, Bishop Evans, 22 years old, mm. was killed um, trying to save the lives of two illegal aliens who were crossing the Rio Grande River. He was, his life was lost, theirs was saved, and then it comes to find out that they were trafficking drugs um, into this country. Wow. There is a humanitarian disaster that's happening on our border, to our border patrol, to our National Guardsmen, to uh, the American people who are dying, 18 to 45-year-olds, the number one death are overdoses from fentanyl. That's right. You have you have you have these cartels that are doing human trafficking, little girls, the rapes and 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 the murders and the MS-13. That's we don't know the 23 yeah. you know suspected terrorists who walked freely into our country. There's a national security and a humanitarian yeah. crisis that's happening as a result of these open borders. So I wish Elizabeth Warren would open her eyes and have some compassion. For yeah. these victims. Yeah, I don't think she really cares. I don't think Bernie Sanders cares. They said during 2020 this was going to be the plan. They were very transparent about it. Uh, Rick, to Kelly's point about the national security implications, illegal immigration is expected to triple, according to the Border Patrol, uh, once Title 42 goes away. Talk to us about the national security implications of this open borders policy. Well, you're already seeing it even before Title 42 expires. We're seeing a number of terrorists, you know, crossing the border. Um, they've caught, you know, numerous, uh, you know, individuals coming from a multitude of other countries. And I think that's what's most concerning, Tom, is that it's not now just people from Latin America, but it's coming across from all other parts of the world, including the Middle East, Asia, and others. So it's it's a it's a massive threat. And you know, one thing I'd say about Elizabeth Warren: what about consistency with U.S. law? You know, why aren't we enforcing the laws at the border that need to be enforced? And this is exactly the problem with the Democrats, and that's exactly why you're seeing a lot of Democratic members moving away from President Biden and that border issue, because they know come midterm, they're going to have to answer for these, you know, difficult situations, the humanitarian crises, and that is just going to get worse as we get close to May 23rd. And lastly, I'll say, you know, that the Biden administration just, uh, you know, over the weekend announced that they were uh, aggressively fighting, you know, the uh, state of Texas, um, 
court filing, you know, to to put a, a stay on Title 42 and, and overturning it. And, and that shows me that the Biden administration now is not just kind of sitting on the sides and maybe thinking about other options. They are aggressively going to dismantle Title 42. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren also said she's not running for president in 2024. She's supporting Joe Biden. Take a listen. <clears throat> I'm not running for president in 2024. I'm running for Senate. President Biden is running for re-election so in 2024, and Senator? I'm supporting him. Would you rule it out, I, You can ask it any way you want, but I'm going to say the same thing. President Biden is running in 2024, and I'm supporting him. I mean, first of all, it says a lot that she's the one who made the rounds on the Sunday shows uh, y yesterday, uh, given that she is the spokesperson for the far left of the party. Uh, Kelly, doesn't she kind of have to say what she just said? It, isn't this all sort of theater to, to prop up a weak presidency since him being defined as a lame duck would be even worse? Yes, she, she, she took her White House talking points and delivered them on air yesterday. But it was all in response to a leaked memo from Bernie Sanders in his campaign saying that if Joe Biden uh, wasn't going to run again in 2024, that he'd consider uh, running for president again. I, I, I do not believe Joe Biden will be at the top of the ticket in 2024. Democrats are scrambling right now to see uh, which talent they can bring to prop up uh, for a potential run. But just given Joe Biden's health and his his cognitive decline, it, it would shock me uh, if he were top of the ticket for the Democrats in 2024. You know, Rick, to you, uh, real quick, uh, who in Washington actually believes that he's going to run again? That you've talked to? Oh, I think people like Ron Klain and Susan Rice, and maybe even <laughs> uh, you know others in that circle. Um, but the reality is that they, they are desperately seeking somebody. This is the first time in a long time I've seen the Democratic bench is very weak. You know, the Republicans have a very strong bench if they get.